How'd you get into it? <laughs> Acting? I think it just seemed like it was better than getting a real job. <laughs> <clears throat> This is Mark Bell from Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. And today we are honored to have Ethan Supley. Uh, did I get that? Supley. Supley. Oh, I'm just going to keep messing it You're up. You're making right. it very fancy, which, which I do Sup appreciate. Supley. Supley. We have Ethan here today. <laughs> and I'm excited because we're going to get into some really good training, but I'm also excited to talk to him about his journey. We're going to talk to him a lot on the podcast, but as we're doing our sets and reps here today for some chest and back, I'm also going to be asking him some questions. Hopefully he can breathe enough in between the exercises to talk about his miraculous weight loss, 275 pounds. And he could share with you kind of the ups, the downs, the ins, the outs. He can share with you everything because as I was talking to him earlier, you said your heaviest was 530 pounds. But I know I, that Maybe was a little, little heavier. That was a little heavier than that. So yeah. it might have been 540, 550. We don't even really know. And and I would say that that is a form of an eating disorder in a lot of ways. There's a lot. Of, there's like a lot of emotion attached to it. Um, it's extremely emotional, and it's a it's a really tough thing to be able to pull yourself out of. But he was able to pull himself out of it. And so we're going to learn about that. But then we're also going to learn about kind of the downside of it too, where maybe you go too extreme. I think you were saying you were on your bike how many hours a day? Eight hours a day, six days a week for two years, just about. It's a lot. And then what was your eating like then? Do you think you maybe swung too hard the other way maybe? Yeah, too? there was a huge period of time where I would only eat while riding the bike, um, which is not healthy or sustainable. And, you know, it's for sure trading one mm -hmm. addiction for another at that point. Have you been that way with a lot of stuff, like even with like your acting career? Like when you got it, when you get into something and when you get going on something, is it? I do kind of go, television? yeah, I do go pretty hard into stuff <laughs> I get into. I am in this moment really trying to just practice like true overall lifestyle changes mm -hmm. that that are not too extreme. Right. You know, I tend to spend only an hour in the gym mm -hmm. a day, which. I think I can maintain right. things that are simple. They might not be easy, but they're simple and, yeah. and they're sustainable. And you can maybe like the key guys every all the time is just always consistency, right? I think I should change that one. <laughs> so when you work the opposing muscle groups, the way certain things work out on paper isn't always the way it ends up unfolding here in the gym. But from a technical standpoint, you're supposed to be able to recruit more motor units, more muscle fibers by working the opposing muscle group, the antagonist here. When we're doing our rows, we're not activating the triceps. We're not activating uh, the front part of the shoulder. We're not activating the pec. If anything, we might be stretching those muscles out a little bit which is then preparing it to contract harder here. Some weird bastardized version of science, you maybe think about it like a plyometric. You know, when you jump down, when you come down from something, you absorb that energy, it gets stored in your body, and you're able to react to it in a way that a lot of times help you jump further. So again, not a scientist. I never went to school formally for a lot of this stuff, so a couple people could be ripping me apart on the technical aspect, but that's kind of the gist of it working the opposite muscle when you're working your biceps from a technical standpoint if you were to do triceps in between you would be condensing the amount of time that would take you to finish your workout but you also might be taking advantage of being able to tap into some muscle fibers that you otherwise wouldn't be able to tap into if you weren't working the opposing muscle group i'm trying to get traps like yours i'm envious of your traps. you're starting to have a trap game going on i see it I'm trying everyone's going to be trapped soon when you get through them. Yeah. Is it true you got all these tattoos for American History X and now you gotta walk around with them? <laughs> <laughs> what shirt you got on, Mark? Got a new logo going on over here. It's a big deal. You can see this on everything. Knee sleeves, elbow sleeves. It's gonna be all over the place. It's gonna take a while to get them on the knee sleeves, but you're gonna see this everywhere, all over the place. And I feel weird about putting my hand on this thing. I don't know. 
Yeah, well, they, I mean, <laughs> it seems like they're leaving out part of the package. I'm not sure why. But I always like to put my hand here, kind of protects my, my ribs. Even when I was fat, my ribs were right there for some reason. You know, there's this actor named Cliff Curtis, who is the, I think he's the biggest chameleon in Hollywood. He'll play, I mean, he's from New Zealand. He's a Maori, but he'll play like a gangbanger. He'll play like in- He's able to morph into anything. Huh? He, he's, he just becomes these different characters. He was like a Southern dude in that movie, um, Sleepwalkers, the, the recent yeah. Stephen King movie. He's awesome. I'm really always really impressed with him. How'd you get into it? Acting? I think it just seemed like it was better than getting a real job. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, yeah. A lot of bodybuilders will push till failure, yeah. but it might be on like a machine. It's on things that might be a little safer or they have a spot when they're doing a squat right. or a bench, but as a power lifter, you might do say like five sets of five. Rep number 25 looks similar to your first rep of your first set right. because the execution is so critical. It's like we need to do stuff with this proper form and technique every time. Yeah. And then you have to ingrain that to a point where it doesn't matter how big of a scale it's on, you might have 500 pounds in your hands, you still have to perform it the right way. Right. It may be a little similar to <clears throat> you know, acting, like acting in front of the camera for like YouTube with nobody else around might not be that bad but now you're in a role where you're dealing you're you might be with one of the best actors in the world and you got to play off of them <laughs> right you might get nervous and because you're not rehearsed enough not practiced up enough yeah and then rather than like making them shine and look better you're maybe screwing it up and like they have nothing that they can really play off of or work with yeah and the combatives i train and they call that kind of thing like training scars you don't want training scars mm. so no bad reps yeah. right right there's no messing around yeah how is ethan to work with well right, <laughs> right. you don't want that he's like in, in professional wrestling and professional wrestling for a while and the way to say that somebody sucked was to say you know what he's a really nice guy right uh, you know yeah and they would say, no, 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 but like, how is he, you know, how's he in the ring and nice stuff? Guy. He'd say, he's a, he's a great dude. Yeah. That's amazing. So that way you weren't yeah. being negative about anything. Yeah. But everybody knew what that meant. With the body weight loss, was it, you know, you're, some of the films, you're, you're the comic relief, you're the, you're the fat guy, right? Yeah. In the scene. And that changed stuff for you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, maybe even like some of your people are like, hey man, don't. You know, getting down to 300, that's, you know, that's okay, but let's not <laughs> dive in too, too far. If they're thinking that, then you wouldn't be working. They're not, well, I don't know what they're, th they could be thinking that, but right. they're not saying that to me. Right, 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 right. You know? Right. And at the end of the day, I started acting when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. I got kids in college. I'm an old man. Right. I, I don't. You've changed either way. Yeah. E even if you're still heavy, your right. mind is changing. Yeah. Different, quite quite a bit different than you were anyway, either way. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not gonna be fat to mm -hmm. play the fat guy anymore. I've done a bunch of that. Yeah, know? yeah, right, right. Yeah, it must be maybe sometimes a tough thing. I, I think even just from a, aside from acting, like you are a character. Yeah. Right, like not you, but everybody's a character. And then you're known as like the big guy. You're known as the bigger guy that always finishes off the plate. Right. You're the big guy that's always known for humor and being funny. And then I think some people, maybe subconsciously, are a little worried about, like, what will my new identity be like, you know, if yeah. I start looking a little bit more like some other people and stuff like that. It gets tied into a lot of different stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's probably best to figure that out as before you're you make a big change. Right, right. right. <sighs> Good. I really... Honestly, I'm still feeling the warm-up. The warm-up was a crusher. Heart rate. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really believe in like, you know, kind of like a, I don't, I don't like the mindset of like a, a lazy warm-up. Yeah, I don't like it. Cause then I'm like, I look at the clock and I get talking to people too. I love being social in here. And I love communicating with people and learning about what they want to do and their goals and stuff like that. And so I could, 
could be like if I'm if I'm working hard, you know, people are less likely to try to grab a hold of me at that time. Yeah. I'll talk to them later. You know, I can get right into my workout, start working hard right away, and then you know, once I'm done, I can start talking. To I I for sure see the benefit of what we did. I usually am by myself with headphones on doing the laziest warm up. It right. takes like 20, 30 minutes right. to get warm. And I think like, what did that take us? Mm -hmm. Five, six minutes? Yeah, right. And we were like in it. Yeah, and you were just Yeah, it was awesome. One thing I really love about getting in here and training with different people and something I've learned, you know, high level people are high level people and it's really, really cool to get around. Um, a high level entrepreneur, uh, you get around someone who's high level in nutrition, you get around, I just I've been really blessed to get around some people that are high level in a bunch of different categories, but at the end it's always kind of the same story every single time. It's, it's, a, it's a long road, it takes a lot of consistency. Ethan's been an actor since he was a kid, it's been part of pretty much his entire life. Uh, he's probably spent more years acting. Uh, then he did not acting at this point, I would imagine, right? Yeah. Probably 40... 40... 43. 43, yeah, I spent the last 30 years, and then some maybe even, of uh, acting. And then it's no coincidence that you get good at it. It's no coincidence that you get roles and jobs, and it just has to do with the basics of figuring out a way to formulate some consistency. And then in what his line of work, I'm sure there's talented people that aren't always maybe the nicest people, but being nice really goes a long way. When someone asks about his work, you gotta keep in mind that it's not just his work that they're gonna be talking about. They'll be like, oh my God, he was amazing. You know, I worked with him on three different sets. Never saw the guy late. Never saw the guy out late drinking. He pays attention to detail. He'll do, what, do whatever you need and then some. And like, those are the kind of things that move you forward. And then like, what uh, special talent or requirement does that, what genetics do you need for that? Just discipline. <laughs> yeah. It's discipline, and if you don't feel like you're that disciplined at the moment, that's okay. Maybe you didn't start out with great discipline. Maybe I didn't start out with great discipline. You can work at it. Did you kind of start out right off the bat, like having a full understanding of Hollywood and Not at all. acting and everything? No, and also just manners too. If you are going to work, one of the most uh, mindful things you can do is be on time to an appointment that you've agreed to make, you know what I mean? And yeah. that, I certainly didn't learn that until I was, had been doing it for 10 years. Hold it, hold it, fight it down slow, down slow, down slow, down slow. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right, we're gonna start the workout now. Gotta finish with like 300 push-ups when we're good. This is the scariest shit I've ever heard. Okay, now let's jump in. <laughs> yeah, now we get to actually start the workout. We are going to keel over. Oh, we're gonna finish with one more thing. I just wanna show them something with, uh, we have a chain set up in here that we use for uh, like a cable crossover type of thing. I know he's never had an opportunity to do it because it's a weird movement. But what I really like about it is you really get to open up the chest, really get to open up the shoulders. So we're going to finish with that. And I think uh, in between that, we did do a lot of back stuff. I'll do, we'll do one more thing in between that and we'll be done. But really, the gist of our workout was that stuff right there. We're just going to do kind of one more thing just to show them, expose them to some different things, give you guys some different things uh, so you have some more fun stuff to try. But really, if you look at it, we did two hard sets of both of those things. We did two hard sets of the one arm row. We did two really hard sets of the chest press. There was some warm up in there. There's some other sets in there, but none of those were hard, right? I mean, they were, they were fairly simple even from your perspective, right? I, I wouldn't call them simple. Right. We did two really, really hard ones mm -hmm. and a few hard ones. Right, there we go. Yeah, at the bottom here, all this weight is on the ground. And so this is like, whatever this thing weighs, two pounds, that's all the weight I got. But each chain weighs 20 pounds. So now as I stand up, I get all the weight off the ground. It's now 40 pounds of weight swinging around. The big advantage of using it on an exercise like a fly is the fact that you know, when you open up and have your hands back like this, it kind of hurts, you know, especially for some bigger guys been bench pressing a long time or doing some strength training for a long time. 
all this gets really bound up. So if I just lay on here like this, and I kind of kick, if I get in a position like this, just even leaving my arms hanging here, it doesn't necessarily hurt. It used to hurt when I was a little bigger, so my shoulders didn't want to go in this range. But even if I just had like 10 pound dumbbells and just let them like hang, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't feel so great. Especially kind of up in this range. You'll notice for you bigger guys, if you were to lay on the ground, your hands might touch the ground here. But as soon as you go like this, your hand raises up if you have some uh, mobility issues, kind of the way I do. Your shoulder won't want to be pinned back. So basically what I'm saying is, my body doesn't want to get into that position, but I can have it get into that position if the weights are light enough, which is the case here, because most of the weight will be on the ground. Awesome working out with you. you uh, some of the stuff that we did was different. Maybe all of it was different. Um, what were some of your thoughts on some of the stuff that we tried and did? The chains were wild because I've, I've never been very good at flies for that reason, that coming out here with the weights, it feels, honestly, it, it feels like I'm putting something at risk, which I didn't feel at all cool. with the chains, which was awesome. Um, holding the one-armed rows, oh yeah. Holding the rows was a whole new thing, very hard. Uh, and then whatever the changing of the weight on the machine uh, press, mm -hmm turned it into totally different tapped into some stuff that maybe you never yeah. had access to before. really wild and this was felt great on my traps which i find i mostly do like face pulls or shrugs but it didn't hit them as fully as this kind of felt like it hit the whole muscle not just part of it right this kind of training is a lot of fun and uh you know for people that have the room somewhere to, to do something like this i know some people just have stuff like this in their garage and they go out and they just like walk on the street with it or drive it somewhere where they got an area where they can just uh, walk with it that's how i started i started doing this over 25 years ago and basically just never stopped and every time i go to do it i'm always like i need to do more of that but super simple uh, I even had somebody local, that one's from Rogue Fitness, but I even had somebody local make them because back years ago you just couldn't find them as readily available as you can now. Inexpensive, very easy to use. You can walk forwards with it, you can walk backwards with it, you can push it, you can pull it. All simple things that you can uh, implement. Had a great workout, got a great pump. You got to see us, uh, you know, doing some, uh, a really, really good like warm up, but it was also like some hit training. So elevated the uh the heart rate a bunch worked a little bit on conditioning probably oxidized some fat in the process plus got us ready and revved up for our workout then we moved into some uh, kind of isolation movements some chest presses on the machine some one arm rows with the hammer strength we didn't have to do a lot of different exercises we did one two three four different movements uh two per body part but i think today was a successful day i think we uh we, we uh, earned our way towards that hypertrophy that Roe is trying to get, trying to build up some uh, muscle mass. And I love what he's talking about. I love what Ethan is talking about in terms of, he's, he's bringing it all together because he dropped the weight and then now he knows one of the greatest assets and one of the greatest investments he can make is in holding on to that muscle mass. If he has you know, 200 pounds of muscle mass, that's gonna have a metabolic requirement, a metabolic cost every single day. It has a dietary, you have to feed that system. You know? So his, now, instead of him being a slave to his body and having to really weigh and pay attention to everything and really be like overly concerned about it, he knows if he's got the muscle mass, his body's gonna do some of that work for him, at least some of the work for him. So awesome job with that. Strength is never weakness, weakness is never strength. Catch y'all later.